Welcome back to Couch Collectibles. Hope you guys are having an awesome day as always. Today we are looking at the 1973 quarter that is worth money. Now there's certain things that can give these coins value which we're going to look at. And if you guys are new, feel free to go check out couchcollectibles.com. We will have the paperback versions available very soon. We still have the ebook versions of my book. So if you guys want to get some information on coins and errors and list of coins, it's all in this book. It's all printed in color as well. So it's uh, it's really cool. So I hope you guys enjoy it when the paperback version is released. I'll make a video and let you guys know here on the channel. So let's just hop into today's video. All right, starting off first with a 1973 Washington Quarter. Now this coin has not only been struck off center, but it also has a full brockage. So we do not see the reverse of this coin. We actually see the Washington Quarter design, the obverse design, here on both sides of the coin, one being backwards as a result of the mint error. Now this coin here ended up selling for around $690. So nearly $700 for a quarter. Can't beat that. Now here's a 1973 quarter that was broad struck on a blank planchet. It is graded by NGC at a mint state 66. This coin here ended up selling for over $115. Next up is a 1973D mint mark. Now you're gonna find the mint marks there on the front of the coins if you guys are new to coin collecting or new to coins in general. Now this coin is only valuable because of its condition. It has a very high grade. It's graded by PCGS at a mint state 67. So it's gonna be hard to get that grade. There's probably not many out there at that grade or higher. And that's why the coin sold for over $380. Now, if you have a regular 1973 quarter that you find in pocket change and it's all scratched up and stuff that doesn't have any type of mint errors, then the coin's really only going to be worth its face value of 25 cents. As we move on here, we have a very cool coin. Now, this is probably one of my favorite coins of this video, 1973 Washington quarter that has been double struck. Now you can see the double strike taking place. It's also flipped over and uh, that is the reverse design that we see here on the obverse of the coin, the back design on the front of the coin. And then we'll see that there on the reverse as well. You'll see the obverse design on the reverse of the coin. Now this quarter here ended up selling for over 370 US dollars. Now here are two coins. These are both 1973 S mint mark proof quarters. So a proof coin versus a business strike coin. I've done a whole video on that. Feel free to check it out here on YouTube. You can just type in proof coins, couch collectibles if you guys want to know the difference. Now this coin here on the left has a clashed die on the obverse and reverse. And then the quarter here on the right was struck on a 10 cent planchet. Both of these quarters sold together. Now if we look here at the first one, this is where the clash die is. So you'll see the reverse design coming through here on the obverse. We'll see that by Washington's neck as well as by the back of Washington's head and his hair. And then here for this other quarter that was struck on a Roosevelt dime planchet, it's a pretty noticeable type of mint error. The whole quarter design does not fit on this planchet, of course. And these two coins sold together for over $1,700. Next up is the same thing as the other high graded coin. However, this is the no mint mark. The other coin was the D mint mark. And it's graded at a mint state 67 by PCGS. This quarter here sold for over $1,100. Now, of course, when you sell the coin, it all depends on, you know, the market and the time in which you sell the coin, uh, you know, how many of these coins exist at this grade or higher. So the grade population is extremely important as well. As the years go on, there might be quarters that come in at this grade and the values can go down a little bit. So keep that in mind as well. Now, here is a 1973 Washington quarter. We see here on the back of the quarter, it looks perfectly normal, but here on the front, we have the inner copper layer exposed because the outer obverse clad layer is missing. We got the clad layer on the back, but missing the clad layer here on the front, the obverse of the quarter. Now this quarter here is sold for over $75, so nothing extremely valuable, but hey, it's $75 quarter. Here is a 1973 Washington quarter design that was struck onto a 10 cent planchet, similar to that other coin we looked at, except for that was a proof quarter. This is the regular business strike quarter. Typically the business strike coins are what you're gonna find in your everyday pocket change. This quarter only weighs 2.2 grams as a result of the mint error. And this coin sold for over $1,900. Can't beat that. Now here's a 1973 S mint mark. Again, this is the proof quarter that was struck on a Nepal 
one piece planchet. So it only weighs 0.7 grams as a result of that. And this coin here sold for over $4,800. That's right, nearly a $5,000 coin. Here's a 1973 D-Mint mark that was struck onto a five cent planchet. So we looked at a quarter that was struck on a Roosevelt dime planchet. This coin here, our coin design, was struck onto a five cent uh, Jefferson nickel planchet. And as a result of that, this coin sold for over $145. Moving on here to a 1973S. Now this is not a missing clad layer or anything. This is actually a proof coin, but a Washington quarter design was struck onto a one cent planchet. So a penny planchet here, this coin here sold for over $3,100. Now here is another example of a 1973 Washington quarter design being struck on a one cent planchet. However, this coin was also double struck as well. So we got a couple things going on for this quarter and that's why this coin sold for over $4,600, $4,600. Next up is a 1973S proof quarter. This is just the regular proof quarter that you find in proof sets and things of that nature. However, it's got a perfect grade. The coin grading scale only goes up to 70, 70 being the perfect grade. It's graded by PCGS at a proof 70 deep cameo, and that's why the coin sold for over $5,800. Next up is a really cool coin that has been triple struck and those strikes being off center. This quarter is the 1973 no mint mark, and we'll see that. It's a very obvious type of mint error. Of course, we're not finding stuff like this in coin rolls, but since it's a 1973, I gotta throw it in the video. This quarter here sold for over $900. Can't beat that. Here are some other quarters that are worth more than 25 cents. In 1970, if you guys did not know, they produced the 1970D where they only made 2.1 million of those coins. So they're uh, very, well, not rare, rare, but very rare in comparison to other nickels. You see the 1971D, they made over 302 million. The 1970D, only 2.1 million of those coins produced. So they are very sought after and definitely always wanna look for those. Now the 1970S here, they also produced around 2.6 million of those, which are 40% silver. So always be on the lookout for the 1970 Kennedy half dollar coin because they are lower mintage in the sense of comparison to other 1970s Kennedy half dollars. Let's start off first here with a 1970D. Now this one, very simple coin, doesn't have any types of errors. It's just uh, a 1970D that sold on eBay. It's not graded or anything like that. It looks like it's in pretty decent condition. However, it only sold for around $12. But still, if you find 50 cents and you sell it for 12 bucks, not too bad. Not too bad of a profit, you know, 50 cents, 12 bucks, I'll take it. But if we look at more expensive coins, here is a 1970 Denver minted Kennedy half dollar coin that was struck 5% off center. So we can see that off center taking place on the coin. So you can always look for that on really any type of coinage. Off center errors, they're very noticeable when you're searching through pocket change or coin collections or whatever. However you get your coins, searching through uh, coin rolls from the bank, very noticeable errors to look for. Now this half dollar coin sold for over $900, 900 bucks. Next up is the 1970D mint mark. Now this coin is graded, it's graded at a mint state 67, and this half dollar coin sold for over $4,000, $4,000. Moving on to a 1970S proof. Now this one looks really, really awesome. Love that mirror-like finish on the proofs. I love finding proof coins. It's really exciting when you find proof coins in a coin roll. Now, because of this high grade here, and because of the double die obverse, this coin sold for over $150. So I know what you're thinking, what's a double die obverse? Well, it means doubling on the front of the coin. So here is an example of a 1970S double die. So we can see the lettering is doubled, and always look for that on the word liberty, the phrase in God we trust. Always be on the lookout for that on the date as well. So if you wanna see your coins up close, you could do so by getting a USB coin microscope on couchcollectibles.com. Link's always in the comments below. 
Now, here is another 1970S double die obverse. It's graded at a proof 68, and this coin sold for over $900. So it's got that high grade, which the coin grading scale only goes up to 70. This is at a 68, so that means it's in very, very good condition, and it's got that double die, 900 bucks. Now, here is a 1970S with the grade of a proof 69. So almost a perfect grade for this half dollar coin here. And because of that high grade, this coin sold for over $800. It doesn't have any types of errors on the coin or anything like that, but it still sold for $800 because of that high grade. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe in the middle. Check out the videos to the left of me. And until tomorrow, I'll see you all in the comment section below. This is Couch Collectibles, and this is where I disappear.